Hey there guys, I am The Six Machine and welcome back to another Warhammer video. So with December right at our doorstep, although the Codex has been delayed, the new Custodes box set is coming out this month and with it some brand new rules and data sheets as well. So GW have decided to begin showing off a few of the new updates and cool little rules and tricks that the Golden Boys will be bringing with them into 9th edition. And to start it all off, we have the brand new unique army-wide system for them, the Martial Katars, or Katars, or Katars, or, well I'm going to say Katars, but say it however you want. And these are essentially quite similar to the 9th edition Necron command protocols that came in their codex, although arguably just a tad more flexible for the Custodes compared to the rather rigid Necron version. And as you can see on your screen now, these new Katars are selected after deployment but before the first turn roll off and you choose a primary, a secondary and a tertiary Katar. Now presumably and because of something that they state later on in the article, uh, there are probably going to be five of these to choose from but they show off three today and you select the three that you want and then in each of your command phases you choose a stance from the Qatar to be active for your entire army and each Qatar has two unique stances within it that you can choose from. So essentially each turn you can move from stance to stance and then from Qatar to Qatar to get a different varied buff on your units as the battle progresses. So it is similar in that progressing style mechanic to the Necron command protocols but unlike the Necrons who have to just choose one from two options in each command protocol and then move on to the next protocol in the next turn, you have a bit more flexibility in how you go through the six possible stances that you will have available to you so you can choose the five, one for each turn of the game that will have the most benefit for you and for your army as the battle ebbs and flows over the course of the game. It is a little bit complex I'll admit but let's make it easy. So as you can see on your screen now, each of the three Katars they've shown off today are on the screen and if we say that you've chosen the primary as the Callistus, the secondary as the Dakatari and the tertiary as the Captaris, you can see from the rules of the Katars that you cannot select a stance more than once, you must select a primary Katar stance first and then must progress through the secondary before you go to the tertiary and then you also cannot go back to a previous Katar once you have left it. So in this example, turn one we could do stance one of Callistus and then move on to stance two in turn two or move to say stance two of the Dakatari in turn two instead and then move to Dakatari stance one in turn three before moving on to stances one and two of Captaris in turns four and five. So it is still restrictive in that you have to go through the Katars in the order that you chose before the game but there is some leeway in how you go through the actual stances and it has to be said some of them are pretty decent. Callistus gives you the option of an extra d6 on your advance rolls or in the second option alternatively allowing you to count as remaining stationary for your shooting so really giving you some options for making the most of your movement phase and also getting some really solid firepower even after you have got some good advances from a load of your units and things like jet bikes and the Venatari will absolutely love this Qatar. Dakatari is a bit more anti-horde in its focus with stance one letting you utterly destroy your enemy's abilities to pile in and meaning that a huge swathe of enemy models may not be in range to attack your smaller squads and then stance two really helping you to kill those one wound hordes or even things like dreadnoughts and death guard with their minus one damage it lets you give up a pip of damage dropping you down to one damage anyway but gives you an extra attack to help chew through those squads and get the most amount of attacks onto those enemies to hopefully just drown them in weight of attacks rather than relying on the two damage. Finally, Captaris is just flat out brutal at keeping your enemy locked up and the term I'm not locked up with you, you're locked up with me definitely comes to mind with this Qatar. Stance 1 letting you negate any enemy rerolls to hit against your units so all of those juicy captain buffs or command point rerolls just utterly removed from the game for that turn meaning a lot less incoming hits 
on your precious Custodes squad. And the second stance, meaning that if your opponent wants to fall back to maybe get some high powered shots into your squads, they will have to win or draw in a roll off against you. And then if they lose, any enemy unit excluding vehicles and monsters simply cannot fall back from combat against you. And this means that they will be stuck, which not only keeps your guys safe from enemy firepower, but also potentially gives them the very real threat of being cut down by your custodies on your turn. Overall, I think these seem to give quite a bit of flexibility and some very useful little buffs to your force, which you can kind of plan for and account for to really help you give you the most benefit as the battle changes over the course of the game. And I mean, none of them are flat out OP or anything, but they do certainly seem to be very, very welcome buffs, which will just help to get your forces to edge out your opponent during a key turn when you really need it to, you know, being able to stop all those melee rerolls when you've got a scary melee unit in, in contact with your custodies will really, really help to just swing that battle back into your favor. As I said, I would expect there to be two more of these as the article does state that certain shield hosts favor a particular stance. So whether this will let you, I don't know, get an extra buff on top of a certain stance or let you keep it for more than one turn or just maybe lets you get the benefit of both stances from a particular Qatar for a turn. Who knows? I guess we will find out very, very soon when GW shows off a few more of the, the rules and the abilities which will be coming in the codex. But I will be honest, I think, and I'm pretty convinced that we are going to be getting a couple of extra Katars as well. We may certainly see some incredibly powerful combinations come into play from all of these stances and the neat little tricks that you can plan for and prepare as you set up your three martial Katars ready for the game. But what do you think of these martial Katars? Do you like them or do you think they're going to be a bit too similar to the Necron command protocols? And also, what other abilities do you think we may see in the other Katars that they haven't shown off yet? Let me know in the comments below. And as always, thank you very much for watching. Please do like and subscribe for more Warhammer content from me. But until next time, I'll catch you later, guys.